She was larger than life at five years old. Yeah, she was a superhero. Yeah. She always thought she was a superhero, I should say. <laughs> yeah, she wanted to. She was always playing superhero games and always wanted to save everybody. Her parents see it as the cruelest of ironies. Their little girl who wanted to save the world couldn't be saved. Dean and Janine Otto's life changed forever one summer day. We were up at the cottage on uh, July 15, 2007. It was a day like it was any other day at the cottage. We get out, Everybody got up and was playing and had fun, and it was time for her to have a little rest in the afternoon. So she had a rest, and she had a seizure when she woke up. That's when her parents' world came crashing in. We ended up rushing her to Chio and found out that um, we were only going to spend three days with her. About 15 minutes after arriving at the hospital, they did a CAT scan, and that's when we were told that she had a brain tumor in, with days to live. Their outgoing little girl, who was so full of love and life, was dying, and they couldn't do anything. The team from Rogers House could make their goodbye a comfortable and peaceful one. The palliative care, care team came over and started talking to us. I wasn't ready for it. And you still hold that 1% hope as a, as a parent that maybe things will turn around. We did the tour here at Rogers House, and as soon as we came through we this knew. place, we knew this is where Maddie was going to spend her last moments. As horrible as it was, it was so touching and moving, seeing her take her last moments. You know, she was lying in a king-size bed with mm -hmm. my parents, Dean's parents, and we were all just holding her, and you know, like, and it was just, it was like you could almost just feel her. Feel her spirit? Depart yeah, you know, it wasn't, uh, Sad, yes, it was sad, but it, it was so moving. Maddie spent only three hours at Roger's house, but Roger's house has stayed with her family. Months after Maddie's death, the Autos brought together the largest team ever for the Rock Roll and Run fundraiser. They also brought a huge donation to say thank you. And each year since her death, Dean and Janine have hosted a gala in Maddie's memory, raising money for the place there for them during their most painful day. Me, I do it because there's, there's going to be people that are going to go through the same tragedies as us. We're raising money for people we don't know. This is what keeps us going. Keeps Maddie's spirit alive too. They were at Roger's house during their worst moments. And it's at Roger's house where Dean and Janine were given strength to carry on through a bereavement program. That day that we walked in and we were all introduced to each other, we all kind of had chips on our shoulders. You know, we were hurting and uh, Boys, about six weeks later, we had all almost become the best of friends. They're our family now. They're our Rogers House family. There, they met a young woman struggling through her own loss. Amanda Moon's daughter, Brianna, died at age three. Amanda's unbelievable. She's on a high pedestal in my eyes. Amanda's Brianna fought a long fight with severe cerebral palsy and epilepsy. At first, this mom was reluctant to accept help. I felt that no matter how much I talked about it, it wouldn't bring her back. Well, I came here just not knowing what to expect, and I met eight different families with eight special children that I've never, I don't have a bond with anybody like that in the whole world. It's the room where you feel safe. And we have something more, something in common with these people we didn't know. We knew each other's pain. We wanted to hear how each other were healing. Like Janine and Dean, this mother is also giving back to Roger's house and keeping Brianna's memory alive. Each year, she throws a fundraising party called a Splash of Pink. I'm not going to focus on the day that she died. I'm going to focus on the day that she lived. And she happened to be born March 22nd. So I hold a charity event right around the time that she was born to celebrate her life and to donate the funds to Roger's house for the children that can use it. And not only that, but for the parents that have to survive. Janine and I have been really close. She's like my mentor. and. We would have never crossed paths had Roger's house not been here. I can sit in a room and I don't have to say anything to her because I know that she understands. Roger's house was built to care for dying children. For parents like these, it's also the place where they're able to begin to heal. You know, yes, our daughter passed away here. Yes, we did two years or a year and a half of bereavement counseling here. It's just everything about Roger's house. I just can't do enough to thank them for what they they mm -hmm. did for us. Giving Maddie a peaceful death, helping us heal. It wasn't always pretty. We had lost a child. Our world had been turned upside down. You know, everybody always talks about going down that straight line. Well, we, we took a 90 degree turn. <laughs> you 
you know. And are somehow kind of trying to get, you know, finding our new normal. Nobody is expecting for their child to die. You have to pre prepare yourself to move on, and they give you the tools to do that. I just live every day for her, really. That was all. I mean, she always believed in, in <laughs> superheroes. Superpowers. And you believe. Yes, we yep. believe too now. <laughs> believe in something. <laughs>